and welcome to our 2021 production of the Nativity at Kensington Community Church. This is the 12th year that the young people at KCC have produced a nativity. Though we gather digitally for a second year in a row, we still gain so much meaning from the nativity story and it still has the power to draw us into the community. It may not be live, but we couldn't miss this opportunity to share the nativity with you and fulfill one of our most cherished traditions here at church. Unlike last December, this Christmas season and this coming new year feel hopeful in many ways due to the wonderful work of scientists who developed COVID vaccines quickly to prevent serious illness and death. We are also feeling hopeful because of the people in the KCC community and citizens in the United States and countries around the world who got vaccinated to protect their own health, their communities, and the global community. In fact, the vaccine is even available for children between the ages of 5 and 11. We are so very close to a different and new tomorrow, and we welcome it and with hope in our hearts. Similar to last year, we are still taking care of the health of our children, youth, and volunteers during this production. But there has been a big and positive change. We are not wearing masks outdoors. Due to the discovery of vaccines to prevent the spread of coronavirus and being a part of a highly vaccinated congregation, we feel safe not wearing masks in certain situations. In fact, you notice that the cast does not wear masks in this movie, a change that illustrates the possibilities due to the vaccines available. I have to say that a production such as this would not be easy or possible without the help of many people from this congregation. Many hands were needed to make this light work. It took not only Enrique, Alexis, and Barb, but many of our young families, as well as so many volunteers from our congregation doing so much behind the scenes work for this production to come to life. We want them to know that we thank them so much for their time and energy and efforts. We could not have done this without them. Although it is a little different this year, we wish it will still bring hope to your hearts and joy to your life, that for a moment the challenges of our time may recede, you feel at peace, and you know that no matter who you are, God loves you, and the Nativity story is really a story about God's love for all of the world. Twelve years ago, the youth of our church turned the streets of Kensington into a Las Posadas. Las Posadas is celebrated in Mexico and Latin America over the course of nine days with friends knocking on a series of neighbors' doors seeking lodging. Taking the traditional Las Posada, our youth adapted it by adding a little Kensington flair. We would travel to neighborhood merchants asking for lodging for Mary and Joseph. The merchants would not invite us in until we proceeded to the inn down the street on the church lawn where we hoped Mary and Joseph would be welcomed. We were proud of this tradition, we revered it. But afraid that it may have striked a little too close to cultural appropriation, we tweaked it after so many years, so we drew on other traditions from around the world as well. Live nativities of one sort or another take place in every corner of the globe, in the Philippines and in Scandinavia, from Toas, New Mexico to Bethlehem itself, and all parts in between. Each place and culture takes their traditional story of Joseph and Mary seeking lodging, and they add their own take on the events. In Scandinavia, there are sleds pulled by dogs. In Toas, there is a traditional Pueblo dance that is incorporated into the events just to give you an idea. And for a second year in a row, because of the coronavirus, we tweak this film one last time to fit times such as these. And so we hope our nativity adds to the joy of your holiday and that you feel the love of God for all people of goodwill as we prepare to welcome the Prince of Peace into the world. Pastor Daryl has now invited you to grab a candle and place it in front of you. I invite you to light that candle now. There will also be carols sung throughout this nativity. The words of the carols will be shown while our musicians sing the carols and we hope that you will sing along with us. Now for our story. Let's begin with Mary and Joseph's special visitor, Archangel Gabriel. As God's messenger, Angel Gabriel visited many people over the centuries doing God's work of peace and goodwill throughout the eons. You might think that such a story begins in the halls of justice or the great palaces of kings and queens and emperors, but alas, it is a story with a humble beginning. A few months back, in the lives and dreams of Mary and Joseph, each received a visit from Angel Gabriel. God sent him to the northern region of Palestine, a region called Galilee, to the town of Nazareth. 
There he took the form of a pillar of fire and visited a young woman named Mary, who was a virgin. She was soon to be wed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. Archangel Gabriel appeared to Mary alone in her house. No one else saw him or heard him, and Mary, well, not surprisingly, she was quite afraid when Angel Gabriel made himself known to her and told her the good news. Greetings, Mary. You are most favored, and God is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary. You ought to rejoice, for God is honoring you. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will do great things and will be called the Son of the Most High God. I do not understand. How can this be? I have no relation to the man. I am a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will envelop you. Therefore, the one who will be born to you will be holy. He will be called God's Son. I know this is confusing and difficult to absorb, but look, God can do amazing things through the Holy Spirit. You see, your cousin Elizabeth, who is of advanced age and ought to be well past being able to give birth, has been pregnant now for six months. Nothing is impossible for God. I did not just visit Mary, but I visited her fiancé as well. I visited him in a dream. Joseph was a good man, a kind man, and someone who loved Mary very much. They had been engaged for six months when Joseph discovered that Mary was pregnant. This was before they lived together, and the shame and scandal on the family could be intense. So Joseph planned to break off the engagement with Mary quietly and privately. It took Joseph a little while to build up the courage to tell Mary he was ending their engagement. That is, when I, the Archangel Gabriel, appeared to Joseph in a dream. Joseph, son of Jacob, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. God has done a great thing through her, for the child conceived in her is from none other than the Holy Spirit. Mary will bear a son, you are to name him Jesus, which means God saves, for he will save the people. I know this may seem confusing and hard to understand, but all of this is to fulfill what had been spoken by the prophet. Which prophet? What did he say? The prophet Isaiah, who said, Oh yeah, I remember. A virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from a deep sleep, he decided not to dismiss Mary after all. He did as Gabriel commanded him to, and he and Mary got married. And it came to pass in those days that Caesar Augustus issued an order for a census that all world should be registered. Thousands of people were on the roads, all of them returning to their home cities to be registered. Joseph went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. Mary, Joseph, and their donkey traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem, a journey of more than a hundred miles.
Good evening, kind persons. My name is Joseph, and this is my fiancée, Mary. I know you do not know us from Adam, but we have traveled far to be counted among the census of, in Bethlehem. We are worn out, having traveled from Nazareth. As you can see, my fiancée, Mary, is pregnant, and we think she'll give birth very soon. I'm not sure we can walk much further. Please, would you open your home to provide us lodging for tonight? It feels kind of odd having strangers showing up at our doorstep. I know. I mean, I empathize with you, and you know the challenges you are facing just to comply with the census. I really do. I couldn't agree more. I mean, it must have been a difficult journey for you, but Mick has a point. This is odd. Imagine asking to stay with us at the very last minute. It's like you're from some other time or something. I mean, I mean don't you know that this is the busiest time of year for us? It feels presumptuous of you to expect to waltz right in like we're running some kind of motel. And there's how many of you and a baby on the way? Uh-uh, that's not something we can do. We can't do this. No, we can't. I'm so sorry. We wish you luck. Thank you for the prayers. We will take them as a blessing as they are intended to be. We shall leave you, kind persons, to enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs> Bye. May God bless them and keep them safe and well. Maybe I can try next time. I'm not sure what they meant. We are here in the flesh and asking for help. What matters more than helping others? Indeed, Joseph is correct. I couldn't say it better, but it bears repeating. What matters more than helping others? persons. I am Mary of Nazareth and this is my husband-to-be Joseph. We are good and kind people down on our luck. We have arrived in Bethlehem and there is no place for us to stay. We have been turned away again and again and we are desperate for any lodging you might provide. We have traveled more than a hundred miles by foot much of the way and we cannot go, go another step. I don't know if you can notice but the time nears when I will have my baby. Have mercy on us, please. Oh Mary, oh Joseph, goodness me. I wish we could help, but we are a multi-generational family living under one roof during the pandemic. Can we take this risk when we are so close to having a normal life? But Daddy, I want to see the baby. Me too, me too. I want to help them too. Perhaps if we had a stable or some sort of separate space, we could house you there. But alas, we are uh, have no extra space at all. Nana is right. JB, we must let our family take precedence. We hope you understand. It breaks our hearts not being able to help. If it were any other year, we would. But with the census and pandemic, we dare not let you in. We understand. Truly, we do. Thank you anyway. God bless you, kind persons. Sorry, I tried. I know, we both did. It's, it kind of looks like a big house, but it's really small, and we need to leave some room for people who are coming to party. And besides, I don't think a don donkey and a kid would fit no, in. Uh, no, no way, no way. But good luck to you. Sorry, Mary and Joseph, there's no room at the inn tonight.
Sorry, Mary and Joseph. Dear woman of the house, I am Joseph of Nazareth. We have traveled a great distance to Bethlehem, my hometown. My fiance is expecting a child. I beg you, can you spare us any room for us to stay with you tonight? Are you Joseph? Is this Mary? Enter pilgrims. I haven't any rooms. They're all sold out. If you had come earlier, I would have had a comfy bed and a private room for you, but you have arrived so late. I do have a stable out back. It's not much and you'd have to share it with the animals. But we are told that blessed is the house that shelters Mary tonight. It is all yours. While they got settled inside the stable at the inn, the time came for Mary to deliver her child. Surrounded by the care of animals, the blessedness of creation, Mary gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. delivered a message to both Mary and Joseph, but he had another message to deliver. This time, he asked some friends, a whole cohort of angels, to form a heavenly chorus. There were shepherds in the neighborhood. They had set night watches to protect their sheep from predators. It was dark, the middle of the night, but then suddenly, the angels stood among them. And the angels cast the glory of God to blaze all around them. They were confused and they became terrified. Then an angel spoke. Shepherds of the field, don't be afraid. For lo, I bring you good news of great joy. To you this day in the city of David, a Savior is born who is Messiah, Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you, a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Do not harm us, but we are humble shepherds. Glory to God in the heights of heaven and on earth. Goodwill and peace to all. What do you think this means? Messiah? Born to us this day? Really? I'm as confused as you, but I'm also excited. This is huge news. Let us be brave and let us do what God's messengers told us to do. We must go and see this for ourselves. Let's go. in months after Jesus was born, the family remained in Bethlehem. It was during that time that a band of Zoroastrian scholars and mystics arrived in Jerusalem from Persia. They came looking for the one that had been prophesied to bring the light of God's love into the world. The Magi were received into the court of King Herod. They told him of their pilgrimage to pay homage to the newborn king. Herod was intrigued by all that they told him, and he plotted to make sure his new king never came to power. The Magi sensed Herod's deception and vowed to tell the family once they arrived at their destination. They followed a bright star in the sky as a signal to them. The star led them to Bethlehem where it hovered over the place where the child had been born. They could hardly contain themselves. The 
this is the right place. Woman, mother of promise, I speak for my fellow pilgrims. We are overcome with joy. Indeed, what a beautiful baby. We have come far to meet this child of prophecy. We are Zoroastrians. We study the stars. We wrestle with ancient prophecies. We pray to the God of Light to reveal the divine to us. We do not know if we would live long enough to see the prophecy to be fulfilled, but now we have found him, the one to bring the peace of God to us all. Praise be to God. Please accept our gifts as homage to your son, the newborn king. Thank you. I hold everything you say in my heart. I am moved by your generosity. He truly is a gift to all of us, and I have a feeling he's going to be a blessing to the world. We bring him gold, frankincense, and myrrh, our humble gifts to honor him. But we also bring a warning. Do not trust Herod. He is up to no good. Go to Egypt. Go by night and go as quickly as you can. Like your ancestors before you, you will be taken in by the people of the Nile, and there you will be safe. We will head to Egypt as you suggest. Thank you. We owe you a great kindness. Once mother and child were able to travel, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus made their way under the cover of night and fled to Egypt. There Jesus was protected from Herod's plot to do violence against him. The family were refugees, and Jesus spent his formative years in exile in Egypt. But their home was in Galilee. So before Jesus turned 12 years old, they returned to Nazareth. He was raised by a loving mother and father, educated in the Jewish faith of his people, and taught what was good and right. Jesus grew up to teach us about God's love and how it is good and right to love our neighbors as ourselves. And so it is with us today, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives and invites us to make room for the hope, peace, joy, and love of Christmas. The story of the Nativity has so many layers and meaning, but hidden in the folds of this story is a message about choices, not just at Christmas, but every day of our lives. Will we devote space in our lives for a humble yet profound message of love? Will we overcome fear and shepherd justice and goodness into being? Will we be wise enough to follow the light of God's love and present our gifts and talents to God? Archangel Gabriel and the angels brought a message to Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. Now we have one last message for you. May we be blessed this holiday season, and may we be a blessing to others. And we wish you the peace of Emmanuel and the merriest of Christmases. It Oh, oh, oh.